In this video, we'll take a look at how to make digital art in the style of Henri Matisse. Matisse is a, one of the famous painters, and later in his career, um, when he was a little bit older and he couldn't uh, really paint anymore because of his age and his health, he started doing a lot of cutouts out of paper. Uh, Matisse was also very well known for his use of color theory in his work. He used a lot of complementary colors and a lot of really bright colors. Uh, in his later work. So we'll take a look at how to use um, some of that combined with digital art tools to make some cutout style artwork in the style of Henri Matisse. So I'm going to hide my example here. And the trick to getting uh, cutouts is to put them on their own layer. So I'm creating a new layer here in the layers palette. And we can just call this, uh, let's just make a flower real quick just to kind of get this concept down. So we want a stem and rather than draw this we want it to look like we cut it out with scissors. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, selection tool here. You might have to tap and hold or click and hold to get this secondary option here but we want this polygonal lasso. And the good thing about this style is you could do this with a mouse. You don't have to have a Wacom tablet for this. So the way this tool works is each time you tap with your pen or click with your mouse you're going to make a point and then it's going to draw a line to the next point that you make and so on and you complete a path by double tapping really fast and there you go you've got an outline of a shape now we could fill that using our paint bucket set to current color with a color and then we have this piece of paper if you will that you can move around on top of your canvas and you can do anything you want to it. You could reshape it or color it a different color or make it bigger, smaller, or rotate it. Pretty much anything you want to do, you can do to this piece of paper. Or we're pretending this is a piece of paper, a piece of cutout paper. So I'm going to make a stem for my flower. So I'm going to use this polygonal selection tool. And I'm going to tap a few times and try to make something that looks like it was cut out of paper. I'm going to use the paint bucket and I'm going to pick a nice color here for the green. And then to get rid of this selection, I'm going to do Control D on my keyboard to deselect, or you can go to Select None from the Select menu. I'm going to use my Layer Adjuster arrow tool with my stem layer selected to move my stem over here. I'm going to make a new layer. We'll call this. Uh, this will be the center of our flower. I'm going to pick a nice bright yellow color here. We'll actually just use something more like that. And then if we want to make uh, an elliptical shape, we could use the ellipse tool, but that's going to make a perfect circle, and we don't really want to do that. We want it to look like it was cut out of paper. So let's use the scratch board tool found under the pens. And we'll, we'll just draw a circle like that. And we'll make another layer. And we'll call it petals. These will be our petals. And we'll use this polygonal selection tool again. And let's move the petals layer below the center layer. We'll just drag it and drop it down there. And we'll go ahead and draw on our petals here. So I'm going to just do some cut out shapes. Now if you want to do multiple selections at the same time, what you do is you hold down shift on your keyboard and it'll put a little plus sign next to your cursor here and then you'll know that you're going to add more selections. So I'm going to make another selection, still holding shift, not letting go of shift. It's probably good for my petals. So now I've got all these selections. Now I can go ahead and uh, fill them with the paint bucket, or I could use the scratch board tool and pick a color, say a light blue like this, and I'm going to paint over it with the scratch board. Do a control D to deselect. Now we've got a cutout here. Now if we want to do something to it, like uh, color it a different color, that's easy to do. Maybe I don't like the center. I want it to be brighter. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Preserve Transparency, and that's going to make it so I can only paint in this yellow area here. So let's pick a color that we like a little bit better. I think I like that. And the stem, I think, should be brighter. And let's just pick a nicer blue color here, something like that. Now, if we want to move this whole uh, flower here as a group, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to group these layers. So I can, cons I can select contiguous layers, layers that are next to each other, by holding Shift. And I can select a range of layers. Or I can select non-contiguous layers by holding down Control and clicking on the layers that I want to select or deselect. I want all three of these, and then we're going to do a group layers. You can do control G, or you can do it down here in this little layers palette command down at the bottom left to group the layers. Call our group flower. And the trick to this is there's a little triangle that expands and collapses your layers here. If you have it expanded where you can see all your layers, if you try to move your group, it won't go anywhere. The only way you can get it to move is you have to collapse the group like this. I don't mean flatten the layers. I don't mean collapse all the layers. I just mean close this little triangle. And then with that group selected, now you can move the group. So it just has to be closed for this to work. And I can move my flower where I want. I could even duplicate it if I want. I can hold Alt on my keyboard and drag, and I can make multiple flowers. If I wanted to color them a different color, I could. That kind of gives you an idea of how to do that. Now, maybe we want to add some texture to these. Uh, there's a few different ways we can do that. Um, first thing that we'll do is we'll make a new layer, and we'll move it above all of our other layers, and we'll call it canvas texture. I guess this, well, let's call it paper texture, because this, in this case, it's a, it will be a paper texture, even though we're using a canvas texture. So the trick to this is we want a very specific color. We want hue to be at zero, saturation to be at zero, and value to be at 128. If you're not seeing HSV here, you need to go to this top right option in your color palette and set it to display as HSV. So with this specific color selected, we'll go to the paint bucket, make sure it's still set to current color, and tap on your canvas to fill. Now you see we filled everything with gray. That's a good thing, believe it or not. Because now if we set the composite method up here to overlay, that gray disappears. What that's going to allow us to do is to add dark or light, and that will still show up. Uh, but the gray won't. Depending on which paper we have loaded here in our Papers panel, which is found under the Window menu, Paper Panels, it's going to give us some different uh, effects for our texture. So we want to pick something that looks like paper. I'm using this Italian watercolor paper. It's this one here. If you don't like the kind of effect you're getting, you can change your paper texture to any other of these textures, and you can play around with these settings. They make the paper texture more coarse, or it makes it broader. We'll go with something right around here. You don't have to get the numbers exactly as I have them, but just somewhere in this range. So we'll go to Effects, Surface Control, Apply Surface Texture, scroll down to where we can see some texture, and I think that will work. We'll take the amount down a little bit, go to OK, and now we've got this paper texture that's on our paper. Now if the texture is too rough or too obvious here, we can turn down the opacity of that layer really just should be kind of subtle so that it looks like paper. Now another trick that we can do is we can add a, a drop shadow to this to make it look like it's paper that's kind of sitting up on a surface. So to do that, you'll want to do that towards the end because we're going to have to collapse some of these layers. And if for some reason you wanted to keep these layers separate, uh, you wouldn't want to merge them yet. So what I do in the, at this point, if I'm really unsure about how I want to progress, um, and I don't want to risk losing anything, I'll save a copy of my artwork. So you could save a copy with your layers and then save another copy that we, that we can use to go ahead and merge these layers. So to merge these layers, we'll select the group that we want to merge, 
and we'll go to this little bottom left icon here to get to this menu and we'll go to collapse layers and that turned all three of those layers into a single layer we can see if we go to move that around it's a single layer and what we want to do is we want to duplicate that layer so we can right click on it or use the right click button on our pen and go to duplicate layer we'll call the bottom most layer shadow turn on preserve transparency pick a dark blue gray color like this we'll use custom scratch board or just the scratch board tool and if you're having trouble with the scratch board tool, make sure it's set to 100% opacity. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit of trouble painting with it. And we want to paint over the whole flower. Just try to cover the whole thing. You can use a pretty big brush if you want to make sure you get it all. And then turn off Preserve Transparency. We'll go to our Layer Adjuster tool. And on our keyboard, we'll press the down arrow a couple times. And we'll press the right arrow a couple times. So now we've got this shadow you can also go down in the other direction if you want to maybe that looks a little bit better we can turn down the opacity of that layer so again it's kind of subtle so it just looks like a little bit of a shadow there from the paper and there you go we've got this nice looking paper flower now we can regroup these layers again did a control G there to group them and now if we duplicate these layers by holding Alt and dragging, you can see that when they stack up, now they look like they're individual pieces of paper that are cut out. So I'll do one more example of that from the beginning. We'll do something that's kind of in a Matisse style. We can leave this paper texture on here too. This will just stay over the whole thing. It's good to put the paper texture on its own layer because the texture gets applied to the whole painting if you're just working on a single layer. And you might not want that to happen because if you try to work on your painting more, you're going to disrupt your texture and paint over it or blend it. So texture is something that you should add on its own layer or you should add it last to a finished painting. So I'm going to call this leaf and we're going to do a leaf in the style of Henri Matisse using the polygonal selection tool I'm going to make something that looks kind of like a oak leaf I'm just going by a painting that I'm looking or a paper cutout that he did that he's pretty well known for I'll do some more of these over here We'll do three total here. These are kind of some leaf shapes, I suppose. I was holding shift there to get multiple selections, as I showed you earlier. I'm going to use the scratch board tool. I'm going to pick a color, let's say something like this, or one of them. Fill it all the way, and then we'll use a complementary color. Now, I have a video that I'll put. Uh, in the video description for here that you can link to and watch on color theory and then I'll help you learn more about complementary colors but in an HSV color space when you're digital painting your complementary colors are across from each other so what's across from blue right now is this kind of gold yellow color so I'm going to pick that as a complementary color I might shift it a little bit to here something like that I'll use that for my other leaf uh, trying to find the perfect color here. There we go, that's what I want. And then if you want another complementary color, um, you can go kind of across the other way, perpendicular to it. And one of these colors would work. Let's go with something like this for our other green. So now we've got three nice complementary colors here. We'll do a control D to deselect, and we've got our cutout paper. Now, if we want to smooth some of these edges so they're not so ragged, we can do that pretty easily using the pinch tool. So I've got the pinch tool selected, that's under the effects menu. And what you want to do is you want to paint along the edge, and what it's going to do is it's kind of kind of 
smash it together, pinch it together. So if you think about closing a Ziploc bag, you're kind of taking that floppy bag edge and you're kind of pinching it together and making it thin and sharp. That's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to follow this edge. And when I do it and I paint along it, you can see it pinches it together and makes it smooth. So that's how you get some areas that look like a more smooth cut. You do want some edges to be sharp and jagged so that it looks like uh, it was cut with scissors. But you can use this wherever you want to smooth it out. If you want to subtract from one of these shapes, you can use the polygonal selection tool and you can just select an area you want to cut off. And then you can hit delete or you can go to uh, edit clear. And that will delete a little bit of an area there. Cut some more off over here. Hit delete. Deselect with control D. You can also use your eraser. Make sure your eraser is set to hard mode and make sure your opacity is set to 100. And you can shave off some areas here and get some different shapes. So now we'll take a look at how to move these around and rotate these leaves. If you wanted to separate these leaves uh, onto their own layers, right now they're all together. If we want to break them apart, what we do is we'll use that same polygonal selection tool, select one of the leaves that we want to put on its own layer, and then we'll do a edit cut and edit paste. If you want it to go back where it was, you can do an edit uh, paste in place. That'll paste it where you copied it from. So now this leaf, we'll call it blue. This blue leaf is on its own layer that we need to put it below the paper texture. You can see we can move it around now. These other two leaves are still together. If we want to break them apart, we'll just select one of these leaves. And I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut this time of Control X to cut and Control V to paste. We've got this gold leaf here. It's on its own layer now, and our green leaf is now on its own layer. And we can put the green leaf in front of the gold leaf by changing the layer order if we want to. And we can group them by holding Shift or pressing Control, and then do a Control G to group them. And then now with this group collapsed, we can move them as a whole. Now adding these shadows you can do individually on each layer or you can collapse them again if you want, make them into a single layer and add a shadow. I'll just show you how to add a shadow on one of these and then we'll uh, call this tutorial good because I don't want it to last too long. So I'm going to uh, duplicate the gold layer by right clicking on it. I'm going to duplicate layer. We'll call this SH. That's just short for shadow. I'm going to turn on preserve transparency so that I can't paint outside of this shape. I'm going to pick, I usually pick uh, kind of blue for my shadow colors because that's just kind of a natural kind of shadow color. I make kind of a dark blue gray, something like that. I'm going to use the custom scratch board tool to go ahead and just paint over everything so that I know it's filled in. Turn off preserve transparency, take the layer adjuster, and then just press down on my arrow keys on my keyboard, and then I'll press uh, left. You could go down and right, you could go any direction. What you want to pay attention to is if you're uh, doing any other sort of painting or implying any other sort of light source, the direction of the shadow implies that the light is coming down this way. Uh, if I wanted the light to be coming from the opposite direction, then I would want to shift it over this way. So we'll go with something like that. If the shadow is too dark, we can turn it down using the opacity here. And then we can group this gold layer with the shadow layer, call it gold. And we'll move this above the other leaves layers. And you can see, well, actually, you can't see very well, but I'll zoom in and maybe you can see there's still this uh, shadow that separates the leaf from the other layers that are below it. So it makes it look like paper. The last thing we'll look at is rotating an individual layer. So I'll select this blue leaf here, and the quickest way to rotate it is to go to the layer adjuster, tap and hold to get this extra secondary icon, which is the free transform tool. 
or you can get to that under uh, edit transform free transform that'll put a little bounding box around your uh, object here on your layer and you'll have to go to one of these different commands here depending on what you want to do if you want to rotate it you have to select rotate and then what you do is you go to one of these corners and once your icon changes into this little uh, rotation icon you tap and you drag up or down or left or right to rotate your leaf then if you want to move it or after you're done rotating it you have to click commit to commit to that rotation and then if you want to move it you can just use your layer adjuster if you want to rotate it again just go to your free transform tool rotate rotate it some more if you want to scale it you can select the scale feature then you can make it bigger smaller stretch it out squash it do whatever you want I recommend not really stretching things out any bigger than they already were um, because it might get a little blurry making it smaller is okay though and you'll again you'll have to commit to your transformation here and there you go so that should give you a good idea of how you can make your own cutout artwork in the style of Henri Matisse